Hello everyone, it's Tracy from the Wild Life Garden here. Um, I'm just about to feed the birds. It's a beautiful day outside today, very sunny at the moment. Um, we are expecting a quite a cold snap next week. We had a cold snap at the beginning of the week. It's gone a bit milder at the moment, but I believe next week there's snow forecast, uh, especially up north. Down south we might get a bit, but we're in the Midlands, so we may just miss us. But um, I'm just surprised at how green the garden still is we have not really had any super hard frosts so plants that normally die back are still uh, you know in, in leaf um, but things are beginning to push up too so it would be nice to have a little look see what's coming up and have a look at the winter flowering clematis I haven't looked at that I haven't checked that for a bit so it'd be interesting to see if, I, know, I know one bud had opened but um, it'd be nice to see if any more buds have opened so let's have a little walk up the garden and, uh, and see what's coming up already. It is a very tantalising month, January. You just It's the beginning of the new growing year and you get eager to start doing things like starting seeds. I can't start seeds. I haven't got a greenhouse. Um, I've just got that little plastic greenhouse outside that's small. It's not really a greenhouse. And um, my shed, which gets frosted terribly if we do get a cold snap. So I've got other than my desk in this room, I've got nowhere to keep seeds, so I don't start seeds yet, as tempting as it is to do it. I have got my seed box out and been looking at them, but um, now I won't be starting seeds for well, probably a couple of months for me, really. But anyway, I'm rambling on a bit there. Uh, the birds are already feeding. I can see them on certain parts of the garden where there's still food but um, they need their seeds and things now. So when we go out, you'll probably hear, if the crows are about, you'll hear the crows cawing. As soon as I step out, they've started cawing at me. So yeah, let's go and have a look in the garden on this, the, um, I'm not sure of the date, uh, 12th, 13th, 12th, I think, of, um, of uh, January. Two weeks into January already, it's crazy. Right, let's go out. Well, just starting outside the back door, I'd love to show you all of this that's fully in leaf. This, and even beginning to flower, look, this is wood anemone, and there are flower buds on it. And then normally this just completely disappears over winter, but the last few winters it just doesn't disappear. Unless we get some snow between now and, heavy snow between now and uh, spring, it, it just stays as it is. And that's a sign uh, our winters are getting milder. Um, the birds are eager to feed, they're coming to the window feeder, uh, they're ready for their breakfast. Otherwise, even the uh, Mexican fleabane, that's not died back, that's in full growth, so let's go and have a look at that. Yeah, look, and again, a flower, I mean it's only one little flower, but I mean, normally this disappears, so it just shows we've not really had much of a winter. Everything's still, even the lemon barn there, look. It's a Mediterranean plant. So yeah, everything's still going, so nothing's really uh, finished anything off over winter. Uh, this is all the food I'm putting out. I've just put some of these uh, fat pellets out. Uh, the sparrows adore these fat pellets, so there's a little container for those. I've put those out already. Then I'm going to top up um, the main seed feeder with sunflower hearts and a mixed seed uh, mixture. Then I put the dry meal worms out on the lawn for the um, for the crows and then more mixed seed for general feed, mainly wood pigeons and collared dubs, but the sparrows do come down and take that too. Uh, the robin's already uh, just arrived, but I don't know where he is at the moment, but the robin did arrive just, so we're in the shed at the moment. And I put softened mealworms out. I put boiling water on these and um, it softens them for the sparrows. They seem to prefer them soft and the robin, obviously. You need to get some live ones, really, for the robin. So I'll go up the garden with the food. And also, I need to put some more fat balls out. Um, so I shall take a couple of those up too. Because those disappear at a rate of knots and they're always there first thing in the morning for birds to munch on while they're waiting for me. So 
So that's the uh, fat ball feeder filled up. It's right next to the shrub, so it's very safe for the birds. Next, I scatter the mealworms on the floor. And then I just top up the ground feeders on these little stepping stones so hopefully keep the feed clean and I just put enough out for birds to eat so there's nothing left for rats. A little feeder here that I do top up and another feeder up here I top up. that goes up in that feeder there and I need to take this feeder down and top that up Okay, so first thing I've noticed coming up is these daffodils. I'm not sure whether, they're, yeah, they're daffodils, not narcissi. They might be narcissi. I planted these in the summer. They were, I'm not sure, I think they were free with a magazine or something. I can't remember now. So I did plant those and I'm surprised how much they've come up and all the buds are in there. Look, it's not just leaf. Those are going to look pretty. Uh, Hellebores are the other thing that's coming up. There's the hellebore flowers. Now, everybody cuts back their hellebore leaves. I'm a bit sort of, I've done this before, cut them back and they're supposed to stop infection and that. So I'll cut some of the big ones, but the one year I cut them all back and um, they didn't, they, it took forever for it to regrow. It was a white one, so I'm a bit loath about it, but there's a hellebore there. Another one here, you can just about see the buds coming up. <laughs> And um, longwort, lots of longwort everywhere. Usually that disappears. Um, and even the wallflowers are flowering. So, yeah, I mean, we think it's cold, but obviously to the plants it's not as cold as we think. More daffodils there, I can see. Lots and lots of um, honesty uh, this year. This will flower next year, I think. But uh, I've got wallflowers and uh, honesty everywhere this year. More hellebore here. Again, as I say, I mean, not quite. I think you'd see the flowers on mine anyway because um, the leaves are quite low. Coming up in the lawn, we've got all the um, cowslips coming up. Cowslips here and here. And over here, more cowslip coming up. Lots of cowslip there, forget me nots. There we go, even a, a cowslip trying to flower here. Uh, more daffodils coming up over there. Yeah, there's a lot of both going on. Take a little look up here and have a look at this um, beautiful winter flower and jasmine. Oh gosh, the flowers are, buds are swelling. Because they look like fruit hanging off it really, don't they? And there's a couple that have opened. That's it there. Isn't that beautiful? And another one here just starting to open, I can see. So it'll be lovely when they're all open. It's done really well. This is mallow. I mean, mallow can die back too, so that can be cooked back later. Most of the berries have been stripped from uh, the shrubs now. Not many berries left on this now. The contanista, I think it is. Oh, there's a hellebore even open here. A white one. Let's move that. We've got one hellebore open. I mean, they're very important for any bees that should emerge. Um, there is some food in the garden, some nectar in the garden. Poppies are coming up there. The heather's in flower, obviously, because that's winter flowering anyway. Come on up a little bit. And the pond's had a thin coating of ice on, no heavy ice on it yet. It'll be not another couple of weeks and I should be spotting frogs in it, I should think. 
I've got a video of um, the one year when we did have a sudden cold snap. It's in my, I think it comes in one of my collections on, on my, uh, if you if you look at the, the little headings, it'll say um, wildlife, I think, in the garden. And uh, the one year I had a, f a pair of frogs mating and the water froze and they were just, well, they're going to status or stasis. I'm not sure what the word is, where they sort of go into that deep sleep. They were held together, but um, just just not moving. It was amazing to see. It was like they were frozen in the pond. It's worth having a little look at. I'd heard it happens, but um, to witness it was fantastic. My little thing is dropping forward. Um, yeah, loads coming up, look, in the garden. This, I mean, just looks like there's been no winter here. It's all forget-me-nots. Um, foxgloves, longwort, uh, all sorts. It's just crazy. You can see the yellow of the um, let's have a look. There's red campion coming up here. That's red campion. Uh, buttercups. I think this is creeping buttercup. Um, obviously I leave all the grass long here, this is the wilderness, so um, yeah, all sorts coming up in here. Um, I knew, oh gosh, the rhubarb's coming up. This ferns haven't even died back, look. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, ferns usually just become a slush amazing oh yeah I forgot to show the Mahonia um, yeah the Mahonia still flowering and flowering for how long October November December January but again no bees it is quite chilly today it's about four and a half degrees I should say today green alkanet already to flower through the arch <clears throat> it's all quiet at the moment more hellebores over here Sounds like a woodpecker. That call then was a woodpecker flying over. Um, try and get ranks. Here we've got um, oxide daisy growing, and lots of things like that. There we go. This is a green um, flower on this uh, this one. So this hellebore. This is the juice mallow. Jerusalem. Oh, uh, Jerusalem something I've forgotten the name yeah so I just I'm just like nothing seems to have died back it just looks like early February in the garden not January maybe even some early parts of March nothing's died back in there got re um, Herb Robert I did throw a pack of little bits of seeds in there so we'll see what comes up it is a bit protected with that, it's supposed to be a raised food bed, but I don't use it as that. Yeah. So, might be January, but things are beginning to grow. And, uh, yeah, everything's looking ready for action. It has to get about 12 degrees before a lot of bees will emerge. Need to... I've been putting that on when the water was frozen. I can take that off now. And yeah, I'll finish the video there. Thank you. <laughs> this bed is the, the one that needs the most tidying. But uh, as I say, the frogs do tend to snuggle down in this bed a lot, especially in this area where um, it's already got the oregano grows. It's very thick and dense. But um, it'll all be cut back, obviously, in March. So, And uh, they'll be in the pond and 
they'll be frog spawn by then. Yes, yeah, so I'll finish the video there. Hope you're all well. Happy New Year to you all. I've started off with a cold. <laughs> I've not had a cold and I don't know how long. The whole family's been going through cold since Christmas and I've been fighting it off, but um, my turn now. But I'm not feeling too bad. Right, Happy New Year everyone and uh, I hope to catch up with you again very soon. Take care.